I felt with this record that they, I have nothing to compare between anything that I did. Now, to live, maybe. And this was my goal. This, when I contacted Delmark and spoke to him the first time, I told him, I'm going to give you something that I'll be able to duplicate live. Mm -hmm. I said, what you mean? I said, I'm going to make this sound great. That's the record. I told Dick that, too. I said, I will do it as good and hopefully better live because you'll have all the animation and yeah. all the live feeling that I think that you, the Porter, really talks about, that you see me more. So I tried to get some of it when I was singing there with certain comments mm -hmm. that I never did before on record, with certain almost me crying, mm -hmm. like I would do live and you know in certain ballads yeah. that I did not do before. I thought it was, you know, so all of a sudden I kind of kind of tried to, tried to be more me, but in a cleaner way, cleaner and not smoother, cleaner like orchestrated like a record should be. I was just curious, I guess, as to how much this was similar, you know, to your other experiences. Um, mm -hmm. Were you going in and laying this down mostly with the band, and then you know adding here and there, or was it something where you guys were, you know, building the framework and then really, you know, putting it in a piece at a time? Or so even before there was a there was a process before coming in to recording, which was us talking to each other, trying to come up with the material, seeing that, for example we stay on track and we try to lay a nice concept instead of just some songs. Mm -hmm. They had to connect some kind of way. That way is, is me, mm -hmm. I think. The way I sing, the way I sure. play, and we can wrap around it. Uh, I know it sounds like a big record as far as uh, production, as far as how many pieces I'm playing, mm -hmm. but you know I play with a larger band. Yeah. So the horns are, are, are a relevant and regular part of my sound. So it's yeah. not like, we coming in, cutting the rhythm section, and then like, let's call a horn section to come in and lay some horns. Right. Which is very popular among... Uh, that's how a lot of people do that. Uh, that's how a lot of people do it, exactly. Yeah. Let's call some horns, uh, let's call uh, girls and have some back on vocals. It was not done this way. Sure, you Everything had, was mapped it was already out. a part of the plan. That's what yeah. Dick said. This, Dick, Dick explained this to the label, and I, I talked to Dick, I'm like, it's my band, so yeah. there won't be any of that. When the rhythm section comes to record, we already, they will know where the horns are coming in, where the girls and what harmonies will be already. Mm -hmm. you know? Of course, I leave room for interpretation on the spot. If something feels right and I don't want to go with the plan, all of a sudden we'll feel something. Mm -hmm. Even, I'll tell you the truth, there were two tracks that never made it. It's a long record, it's 70 minutes, but mm -hmm. there are two tracks that they sh we shelved and are great. I love them. Okay. Uh, they you, blues. You got to save something for like the bonus re-release exactly, in 10 years. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but they are really, really good. And I told Dick, like, it's not like, okay, let's call the horns. No, we did it in pre-production. There were charts mm -hmm. for the horns. My rhythm section knew exactly where the horns would come in. So we, and the day before the, the session, we were all in the studio together at Delmark Studios playing together. Different room playing together. So every piece knows its part. So you said you talked to Dick Sherman first about the process. about doing about this whole process. Before him you... and I talked about working together for years. Mm -hmm. He wanted to produce me. I wanted him to produce me. Yeah. There were things about us. Uh, I read some liner notes when I was 16 when mm -hmm. I first got like an Albert Collins record. Yeah. And I saw the liner note produced by Dick Sherman. I did not know who it was. And yeah. all of a sudden, we get together after playing Willie Kent, I released Living It after right. Willie died, and he, he, I sent it to him, and I realized who he was. So all of a sudden, him producing a record or wanting to do it, and we are close friends too, mm -hmm. was, was a nice thing of- To bring it full to circle. Bring it back. So we did talk before about uh, what we would do. We wanted to work together. Guy, what you want to do? Do you want to do solo tunes there? Do you want to use your smaller combo, the four mm -hmm. piece, and then add the horns and the girls on some of the stuff? And I said, no, I want to do one record, yeah. one theme. Like, there's no point of stripping the horn section. Mm -hmm. I could write a tune with a less intricate horn section and have them come in mm -hmm. more sparse if I don't want a lot of horns. Same thing right. with the girls. This is my sound. Of course, at a show, I may keep the band down mm -hmm. uh, or behind backstage while I do a couple of solo songs mm -hmm. as well that I write. But for the majority of the part, this is the sound that I have in my mind. Mm -hmm. And Dick knew it and allowed me to, he liked it. I mean, it's nice sure. to be able to work with uh, and as many pieces. Was it? But you asked me before, I have to tell you about yeah. that. About, so when we recorded, we did, we had a rehearsal with 
the whole full sound one night before the session. Before the okay, chat. right. Then we came for isolating purposes, for other, for logistic purposes mm -hmm. and schedules as well. The rhythm section was scheduled to come in first after we knew everybody's part. Yeah. And then the rhythm section and myself, we laid it down. Yeah. We finished the tracking. The horn section came in a day afterwards. Okay. Because we already knew. Like sure. we, we knew everybody knew the parts. There were no surprise. The surprises were the feeling that was going to execute it for that take. Okay. That's always a surprise with me, with us. That's how I feel it should be. Mm -hmm. So, and we related to that. And then the girls, one day after the horns left. So. So you tell me you did most of this record in three days. <laughs> no, the three days were the rhythm section. Okay. We, we did short days. We had yeah. scheduled. Okay. You know, the band members had certain schedules yeah, yeah. myself. So we had like three days, two and a half days mm -hmm. for the rhythm section. Then the horns came in. My home players had a tight schedule too, so we, we had a couple of very short sessions. Mm -hmm. So we had to extend because of the session, instead of like having an eight hour session, we can finish it in two days or one day, we had like a two and a half hour session. Oh, okay. So we had to extend, but overall, it was done in, the tracking was done in about a week, that's it. Because um, I know you were working with uh, David Ritz on some of these numbers. Yes, that's oh. another important thing. Now, so. was that just, uh, as far as that goes, was that just, um, collaborating on the composition or did he have like an ongoing role with you know some of these songs that you were like how do you want it to sound later on or it's uh it's the writing mm -hmm. process really David and I have been knowing each other uh, for a while we have been collaborating for a while it's funny but it came through buddy guy mm -hmm. the connection because he was here in Chicago writing buddies I never heard that story until I read it in the liner notes yeah I didn't either by the way well I heard some he didn't tell me the whole thing and yeah. when I wrote it I'm like when I read it I said Wow. So a lot of that closing circles, yeah. if it's with Legends, with Buddy Guy, with David Ritz, with Dick Sherman, mm -hmm. even with Delmark, I could tell because, i tell you later, because one of the songs I got to write to sing the blues yeah. has to do with me coming to town and buying, I think, a Louis Armstrong record there at the record mart that sure. just closed down. Yeah, just and all of a sudden, there. Bob Kester that owned the record mart in Delmark yeah. signs me and I do that song yeah. on his label. That, that is a full So story. a lot of things, you know. A lot of things coming back around. Coming back. But uh, so David Ritz was in Chicago a few years ago writing the Buddy Guy autobiography with Buddy. And he said that Buddy told him, let's go downstairs to, to hear this cat. Yeah. I was the cat, I yes. guess. Yes. And I do remember David coming to me at the end of the night. I was selling CDs. People seemed to really enjoy that night. The band was getting down. And uh, he's coming to me. Man, you sounded, you sounded great, brother. I'm like, thank you very much. My name is David. Give me the card. And yeah. David Ritz said, I'm like, I'm a big Ray Charles fan. Oh, you yeah, know yeah. That. And a B.B. King fan. And I read Brother Ray, the book I thought was a great book. And I'm like, David, right? What? He said, I'm David Ritz. I'm, I'm here from L.A. I'm, I'm, I'm working with Buddy. I'm like, what? And I asked him, like, wait a minute. Are you David Ritz from Brother Ray? He said, yeah. He said, give me a call. I want to talk to you. You sounded great, man. I heard you play George on my mind. It was great. Okay. You know, George X is yeah, staple for me. So. He was in town, he came by my apartment the next day, or two days after, and uh, we ate together and we wrote like four songs in an hour or something. That's a pretty good hour, and I said, pretty good lunch. And we stayed and had lunch and we started talking, I asked him a lot of questions about B.B. King, about, you know, about Ray Charles, about, about Marvin Gibb, about Aretha. Sure. You know, it was like, whoa, what's going on? And we hit it up. all those people. Yeah, know? exactly. So we about Aretha Franklin, so we talked and we started collaborating. I went, see I came here from Brazil now in June to perform here at Legends as well, at, at other venues and knowing I'm coming to record. I, we mapped it out, we mm -hmm. spoke to Delmark and I talked to David, I said, Brother David, I'm gonna record. Say, so you're gonna head out to LA to write. We closed out a few shows for me to perform in LA. I took about a week. I went to meet with David oh, okay. between the shows. Another one hour with three songs. You got a good thing going there. And huh? I said, you know what? I like them too. And uh, so he just emailed me last night too saying we he said we've got to get together to write stuff for the next record. All right, so thinking ahead, huh? The collaboration, but for your question, I elaborated too much. It was in the song writing. Mm -hmm. We have a nice, uh, we talk openly about, uh, about life, about things, about music. And so we wrote the songs together. Then we have a certain idea, me or him, and we kind of map it out. It's just a guitar in my voice. Okay. 
So, and then I all of a sudden send him another one, let's say, uh, the duet that I'm doing here. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. And I sent it as, to yeah. them. It wasn't written as a duet. Okay. It was written about me singing it. Sure. You know, and he was like, man, it sounded like a standard, like a classic, sure. which I thought it did too. Okay. And Delmark, Steve Wagner, and Bob was like, whose song is it? They thought he was either a Ray Charles or a Nat Cole song. Okay, yeah, Which sure. I take as a big compliment. Yeah, absolutely, you know? man. So, so, but I was looking for, uh, I, you know, I was uh, discussing with, uh, with Sarah, with Sarah Marie Young. We had did a few uh, collaborations on stage together, mm -hmm. actually mostly singing Bossa Nova stuff. Okay. Like in uh, Portuguese and doing some, uh, I don't know, soul, rhythm, and blues influenced stuff and some older jazz as duets. And I had this idea because I'm using uh, background vocals for on my material since living it of having the girls, but also breaking it up a little bit, maybe doing a duet, mm -hmm. which I never did before on an album. So we tried to talk to Dick even about what song do you think, you know? So we ran a few old cuts mm -hmm. and then I'm like but my happiness I just wrote this with David why don't we flip the script and we all s we sing it to each other okay so we thought it was a good idea and it uh, sure I it turned out great David liked it too when we played it for him we, right. he, he seemed to really like it absolutely I mean did you find that it was challenging trying to replicate that sort of you know live sound with like that uh, kind of staggered experience of recording I feel like one of the hardest things to do in a recording studio is get. to get that kind of like energetic quality. You know, a friend of mine described it as uh, being making an album in a studio is a lot more like making a movie than it is, and, and that <laughs> playing a show is more like putting on a play. You know, like when you, you when you have a play, it's something that's on stage. It happens. People are engaged with it, and whatever happens, that's what you get. You it's know? a good analogy. I never thought about and, it like that, but, but a I movie, agree. You know, it feels. When you're making it, it's like totally non-linear. You know, you're shooting scenes over and over yeah. again. You're chopping things up and editing, but it's supposed to create this experience that when you listen to it or watch it at the end, it feels very natural. Exactly, exactly. And I agree hard. with yeah. this. It's hard, but again, since everything was mapped, not everything was felt. You know, like mm -hmm. if you look at a big band, because we both like Absolutely. big bands. Everything was mapped. It still sounds great mm -hmm. and heartfelt. It doesn't mean some people say, well, it's not raw. Let's separate. It is raw because we playing it with intensity and feeling mm -hmm. when we playing it, and it's raw. And I leave room for my guys and for myself to improvise and hit it at the moment of the performance. Mm -hmm. But music of quality, when it's more than one person, there's a certain arrangement. It doesn't matter if it's spoken or written, it really doesn't matter if you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know. But you are doing the best you can within that restraint. Just because yeah. there's always some restraint. We hate it, yeah. but there is in life, right? Well, if there isn't, there's no structure, you know. So like, the stru music, good music, yeah. have a certain have a certain structure, you know. Even we want we want to think it doesn't, but it does. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's just it was. We knew where we were going. We talked about it, we rehearsed, we played it. We rehearsed at the studio all together. Not rehearsed, ran the song, just played them. And laughed, and uh, had food together. Mm -hmm. And the guys all know me and I know them. It's, we are friends as well. Mm -hmm. So I hope it comes through, you know, because it was, it was actually yeah. fun to do it. Even the after with, uh, with Dick Sherman and Steve Wagner, Ed Delmark and Bob Kester, when I came in to, let's say, to discuss something or fix something or do another version to see if it will work or have a certain mm -hmm. idea. It was always a very uh, positive and everybody trying to make the best product. Well, that's, you know? that's the way you do it, I guess. That's, uh, <laughs> right? So that's, if we all, that's what I always, we should all strive for the same thing, yeah. for it to be a great record for people to enjoy. Absolutely, man. And while staying true to who I am, you know, mm -hmm. which I felt that I was on every song on this record. Yeah, so and which is a mixture actually. It's a it's a it's a mix of obviously the people that uh, you admire and have drawn on, and uh, the music that you've written yourself in collaboration with uh, David and, and with David and Ritz, yeah, yeah. Um, which is really cool. Um, so what's uh, you know I, I have to always ask what's next, right? Is it do you have is it you just gonna kind of run with this, just put this out there and see how far you can go, or is it do you immediately start thinking about 
um, what's next, you know, musically? Sadly, I know David I thought Rousseau about, already called you yeah, up. He said. Exactly. I, I gave, well, sadly, I think about what next before I finish. I'm the same way, man. I, it's hard to finish one thing before you already have an idea. But in this case, I did, uh, for the record, we did record 13 songs mm -hmm. that I never performed before. Actually, yeah. 15, but two did not make the cut okay. because of length issues of the sure. record, not because of... Uh, so there are 13 songs which are important songs to me. Yeah. You know, if it's stuff that I wrote, if it's an instrumental that I wrote, if it's stuff that I never covered before or never tackled before, which is pretty deep stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Percy Mayfield, Ray Charles, uh, B.B. King, mm -hmm. even Al Albert I did do. It's, uh, I, I want to perform it live some. Mm -hmm. I want to see where I can take it live and the energy that I could, uh, how I can kind of what they say, put my foot in it on stage mm -hmm. as well, you know. So I would like to run with it for a minute. My mind is, do you know, I play solo. Yeah. I play with a smaller concept. Uh, musically, there are a lot of things I do if it's something, like I talked to you about Bossa Nova and Samba, yeah. but I'm staying with this element for, first of all, I feel like it, yeah. which is important. So I'm staying with this, and I will keep building. I will add blocks to this, because I feel like this is, uh, this is after. Like you asked me about by myself and about I am who I am, it is yeah. what it is, even living it. These, was lower. These were lower. Mm -hmm. They were blocks on top of it. And I'm saying about myself, yeah. quality-wise. Yeah. They were lower because that's where I was at the time. I think well, they're good. I, I mean, know you liked it a lot. The goal is to keep uh, getting better, right? Like, I you feel know, like I'm playing better. Yeah. I feel like I'm singing better. And I feel like it came, I shouldn't say easier. The other ones were cut pretty much easier than that even. because. Yeah. But again, even I am who I am by myself, there were certain, I played solo of so many shows here at Legends alone. So yeah. I had the arrangements down. Right. I, it, to me, it was like I cut it in two hours, probably, because yeah. I played it for a million hours live. Right, right, right. Same thing with my Tons organ of, trio. Yeah. So it's kind of tricky to say that. Me putting the band and that's together. that's a different project than coming exactly. in and doing 13 songs that have not been, you know, you played live. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I came from overseas, from being on the road, for performing overseas. Put a band together from overseas, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. using wonderful musicians. Everybody on the record, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we put the band together in remote control. We all knew each other, but we have never been, they never been my unit before. Mm. We played together, but they were not my unit. The horn okay. section yeah, was. Yeah, right, right. And the girls did sing with me before. Okay. But uh, so doing that over the phone overseas, coming in, two months later, we're in the studio recording new material in that intensity. And this has been my band since now. So it's like since June, it's time now. Mm -hmm. So it was like 10, what? Eight months, right? Yeah. Seven months. Time flies. So it's, uh, I thought that it was kind of the same thing, you know. It was the same natural element to record. It just started from a different place. Mm. It wasn't, you know, before the other two CDs you asked about started after performing that material already for four years. You go in and just record it. Yeah. This time, we are performing this material for three weeks. And now we're coming in to record. So there, it's a different, that, uh, that was the that difference. Was different. All right, well, i got to ask you, uh, if, you know, the album is called Truth. Yeah. Um, what is your truth here? Is it, they got to listen to the album to find out, or is, do you feel like that you, you know, is there a concept or something that clearly defines that for you? As just being as true as natural as mm -hmm. I can. That's my truth, I think. Trying I to be know. natural about things, you know, and so... You know, everything I do is gonna be gonna have certain element element of the blues in it. You know it. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. People label styles. I'm not that good at the labels of the styles. The labels are pretty meaningless. I try to do it naturally and have it come from deep within. That that will be my truth. Take me a while to discover a truth that lives. 